everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Drop. And the band is back together, Woo! baby. He's hey. here. He's live in the flesh. He's alive. I can't mm -hmm. believe he even has a fresh new haircut after <laughs> uh, adding a new addition to the family. You're alive, buddy. Are you sleeping, Wish? Are you? Have you had any sleep since uh, baby's been born? No, but that's what's beautiful about being a workaholic insomniac is that you're tailor made for a newborn. Yeah, my daughter Iris Winter was born uh, a couple of weeks ago. Took a little paternity leave. Arda, kudos to you, sir, for doing the AM radio solo act on the podcast at times, which is very impressive. But great to be back. Uh, love, lovely time being with a little one, and and really uh, appreciative that everybody is is happy and healthy so far. And Iris is already a Devils fan. Uh, well done. Get there early. <laughs> yeah, I threw her in. We have two different devil's onesies we're throwing her in. Look, I, listen, I, <laughs> I fully understand that as a native New Yorker, which she is, that there is always going to be the chance that she's going to have that, you know, terrible teens backlash and all of a sudden show up in a Mark Messier vintage Rangers jersey. Uh, and I'll have to deal with that as a father. I'll have to deal with that. But so far, you know, my daughter Vivian's a big devil's fan trying to get Iris on the on the straight and narrow path as well. And uh, and so far, so good, because she has absolutely no say in it whatsoever. Well, we missed you, buddy. Welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, and unfortunate that your sleep has been suspended for the foreseeable future, uh, which brings us to our first segment here on The Drop. <laughs> Suspensions. We got a couple of them in the National Hockey League. Wish Brendan Gallagher got five games for his blatant elbow on the head of Adam Pellick the game between the Canadians and the Islanders, the department's video explaining the suspension said Gallagher's elbow makes direct and forceful contact with Pellick's head. It is the head that absorbs the vast majority of the force of the check. And they also said uh, that because he has no priors, uh, no, this is his first defense really in the National Hockey League after 723 games. Uh, that explains the length of the suspension. Uh, I like to do winners and losers on uh, news and notes. You can feel free to join me if you want, Wish. But my winner here is nobody because <laughs> I don't think many people are happy with the length of the suspension. I understand that Brendan Gallagher is a first-time offender in this regard, but that was a blatant hit to the head. It could have been a lot worse. It looked horrible. It was horrible. And if we're trying to remove plays like that from the game, as soon as you heard, oh, it's only a video hearing, you were like, man, like, it doesn't matter who did it. That is heinous. You should not see that at any level, let alone in the NHL. Yeah, I, you know, listen, first of all, I think this suspension might have gotten overshadowed by some of the news last week. And obviously, we'll talk more about the Hockey Canada thing uh, a week from now when they do the uh, the press conference stuff. But um, it was it was pretty big news. And 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 I think with the suspension being five games, you're right. I, I You watch that play, you want it to be more. But you also have to remember Department of Player Safety Math. And Department of Player Safety Math says that most illegal check to the head suspensions are going to be around two to three games. That's kind of where it's been for the last couple of seasons. Brendan Gallagher's five game suspension by the NHL Department of Player Safety was the longest ban for an illegal check to the head since Nazem Kadri was given eight games in May 2021. He, of course, appealed that to Bettman, appealed to the neutral arbitrator, and the suspension was upheld. So five games within the context of the of Department of Player Safety, was pretty emphatic. I mean, that is a first-time offender. Uh, the usual uh, run of it is two to three games. He gets a couple more on top of that. I know it doesn't seem like it's as massive as it should be given the nature of the infraction, but again, like you take it within context, and all we can ask of these guys is consistency. Uh, I think they, they got the Gallagher suspension right, to be honest with you. Okay, um, that... Makes sense given the information presented there. Still seems low from an overall standpoint, but when you put it into context, it certainly gives it uh, the color it absolutely needs. A loser here for me is maximum allowables in general, Wish. Uh, just the idea of as soon as you knew that it wasn't an in-person hearing, you knew what the maximum suspension could be. And we always hear whenever there's some sort of an other infraction, the maximum allowable fine under the CBA being a pittance, you know, pennies to an NHL player that's making millions of dollars. It was just another example of that and a reminder of that minor to the overall story obviously but that's one thing that came to my mind and other hockey fans minds for sure and and so that's the that's the thing though arda is like 
you want longer suspensions. I would like a longer suspension now and again. And then the Gallagher case, I think that could be warranted. But we're the only ones that do. Like the fans are the only ones that do. The fans on social media, whenever something like this happens, are the only ones that do. The NHLPA doesn't want longer suspensions. They appeal long suspensions, even if one of their other you know, members of the union is the guy getting concussed. Uh, the NHL general managers don't want longer suspensions. The minute they get a lengthy suspension handed down from the Department of Player Safety, they're the first ones on the phone to complain about that suspension. OK, so they don't want longer suspensions. The NHL gets dinged all the time about their mode in giving out a certain number of games for an infraction. How if you if you threw the book at a guy, you, they, they'd understand it better. They wouldn't have these things happen again. But it's not necessarily the NHL that's keeping these numbers low. It's the CBA with the with the mechanisms in place for appeal. It's the NHLPA that fights these suspensions. They're not exactly sitting with their hands in, you know, in their laps saying, that's fine, five, eight, whatever you want is fine. They're fighting them. And it's the GMs at large that don't argue for there being longer suspensions. So, you know, that that's it all has to kind of come together to get through this player safety math that we have to deal with. And it's not just the NHL that's keeping these numbers low. Last point I'll make on this, which is I understand. I have not been on the ice. I have not played in the NHL. I don't understand the nuances per se that a player would and how they feel about these kind of situations. And I understand completely uh, different entities fighting for their clients and players, et cetera. I get all that. What I'm saying is for that hit, for that punishment to me, does that help eradicate that kind of behavior in the game? To me, no, it doesn't. Right. So right. That, and, that's where that's where I land on that. And eradication probably isn't going to happen through suspensions. It happens through generational changes in the game. It's the reason fighting has dropped is because other levels of hockey don't fight anymore. And, you know, as we teach people how to play the game without headhunting and things of that nature, I think we're only still a decade into the Rule 48 era or yeah. just over it now. Yeah. So, I mean... We're getting there. We're going to get there where these types of things have become rarer and rarer, and and eventually we we hardly ever see them again. Um, but you, your point's taken also that like you and I are are not National Hockey League veterans. You can't go on Hockey DB and and find either of our names. Uh, and so because of that, I always sort of defer to what the players want. And honestly, until they rewrite the CBA or until they tell their own union, stop fighting these nickel and dime suspensions and ask for ones that are lengthier and more emphatic, we're not going to get there. It takes two to tango. The NHLPA is as complicit in keeping these numbers down as the NHL is. Can't find us on Hockey DB, but you can find us on Wikipedia. How about that? I'm uh, on. I'm, I'm on. I'm on IMDb. Uh, my my lengthy what credits do you have on IMDb? Oh, I guess I, you, you, I, I books, spent, you, you know my books. lengthy time as a talking head on ESPN classic shows like Five Reasons You Can't Blame landed me on IMDb. <laughs> so I am <laughs> definitely amazing. There, yeah, I need to pull up Wishes IMDb at some point. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jacob Truba's IMDb would include now a two game suspension for elbowing Vegas forward Pavel Dorofeyev in a play that I guarantee ninety percent of people missed the first time around. They had to go back and watch the replay in order to. Catch the elbow. Uh, he does make contact with Dorofeyev's face. Uh, winner here for me is the Goodfellas meme with Joe Pesci going into the basement, thinking he's going to become a made man and then getting whacked. Uh, that was thrown around a lot here, and I respect it uh, because a lot of people were like, wait, what? Jacob Truba's getting suspended for what? What's going on here? See, I go with a different movie reference. This is extremely large Al Capone getting caught for tax evasion energy from the Untouchables. <laughs> like, you know, all the hits that Jacob Truba has laid out in his career, this is the one they ding him on, uh, one that didn't even get noticed by the broadcast. Uh, what Truba did was hideous, right? Um, and I think that at the end of the day, this was probably too, one too many accidentally on purpose type plays. And, and now he's a repeat offender. Now he's in the system. Now the next time he does something borderline and they decide to suspend him, the number is going to grow because he's now been suspended. But the thing that really struck with me about this suspension, I know that, you know, these are a little bit aged based on when this podcast is coming out, but I was out and I still think there's something to be said for them, which is that you cannot say the NHL Department of Player Safety isn't looking for a reason to suspend Jacob Truba anymore. That's been a, 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 a just a gigantic criticism of DOPS forever in the last couple of seasons, that they're not looking to suspend Truba, that they've been protective of Truba. Okay, 
the broadcast didn't talk about it. The Department of Player Safety requested video that mm -hmm. wasn't on the broadcast to then see definitively if there was a reason to suspend Truba. So, you know, we can put to bed this notion that they're not looking for a reason to suspend him. It just so happens that he's a guy that plays in the borderline and doesn't cross the line enough for them to suspend. But if there's a reason to, they'll go find, you know, spy camera footage. They're looking in the, the, the ring cameras on the front doors of houses to find a reason to suspend Jacob Truba. Yeah. And then they did. And, and, and let's give credit where credit is due, because th that department often gets criticism throughout the hockey world. OK, uh, warranted or not. But in this case, they got it right. They found something that was heinous. Like you said, it, if you go back and look at it, it was a deliberate play. He does deserve it. That th that did deserve a second look. And I think Dops did the right Dude, thing in this situation. They're not they're not without criticism they're not without flaws they're not without mistakes they're not without reasons for us to say hey why did you do this or why didn't you do this i'm not trying to portray the department of player safety as some sort of you know be all and end all in, in good decision making because they're not they've got problems that being said i think they take way too much criticism than they, they deserve Agreed. and and Agreed. it's from people that don't necessarily know the process and how these suspensions are laid out or that are you know willing to admit that it should be about consistency. And by and large, when they make these de decisions, it's within the context of previous decisions and the numbers are usually right. Yeah. So credit where credit is due, like I said. And speaking of credit where credit is due, Wish, we got to give credit to the Edmonton Oilers because oh, hell yeah, while do. you were gone, uh, they were doing a thing. <laughs> uh, they were, per by the way, they were absolutely perfect. They were Kurt Henning in January. Okay, <laughs> One of one of three teams in NHL history wish to go perfect in a calendar month playing a minimum of 10 games. Only three teams in NHL history have ever done that. They went 11 and 0 and yeah. 0. They won, they've won 16 straight. That's tied for second longest in NHL history in terms of win streaks. One win away from tying the all-time record, the Penguins, in 1992-1993. They're third in the Pacific now, a 29-15-1 and one record. Wish, how, and why? I mean, please refer to them by their confirmation name, which is Greg Wyshynski's Stanley Cup pick, the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> um, here's a couple of reasons why, and in, in looking inside the numbers. Connor blew up. I mean, we all knew that when this team was in the doldrums and cost Jay Woodcroft his job, that they were one Connor McDavid month of dominance away from getting back into this thing. And he had 57 points over the span in which Chris Knobloch took over as head coach. And uh, he had 26 points during this winning streak for the Oilers. So he's doing his part. His, his line with, with Nugent Hopkins and, and Hyman's been incredibly good, maybe best line in hockey territory. So connor has been one of the reasons, but not the only reason. The biggest reason, maybe even more important than McDavid, has been goaltending. Stuart Skinner and Calvin Picard combined for a 16-0 record, a 1.50 goals against average, and a 946 save percentage. And the thing that really gets me about this, Arda, is that the defense in front of him hasn't really been all that spectacular. Um, they were a 2.4 expected goals against before the streak started and that 2.48 during it. So it's not as if like the defense in front of them has dramatically changed. What the Oilers are getting is incredibly more efficient goaltending. Before the streak, high danger shot attempts by other teams. The Oilers had a save percentage of 746 against them. Now it's 878. Okay, that's how well they've improved on high danger chances. Overall save percentage at five on five, pre streak 898. During the streak, 9-4-0, okay? That, again, is a remarkable reversal of fortune for the goaltending. Jay Woodcroft is probably watching this on his couch at home saying, where the hell was this when I was coaching? I don't know, man. I'm with you. Maybe it was the Jack Campbell problem. I don't know. But the goaltending has been great and better than anyone expected it could be with Skinner and Picard. And that, as much as anything, is why the Oilers are on this streak. I want to see the win streak go as long as possible. How do, how long do you think it will go? I think they break the record. I, I I think they I think they'll take care of the Golden Knights and the Ducks when they get back off the break. Then they'll probably have it snapped after that. You know, they'll take an exhale, Just one and game, lose <laughs> lose their last game or whatever. But um, but you know, the the interesting thing about this streak that I in the context of the Pacific Division though is when the streak started, like right at the dawn of the streak. 
the Oilers were 18 points in back of the Vancouver Canucks. Mm. And then they don't lose for a month. And they're still only 12 points in back of the Vancouver Canucks because Vancouver went 10 2 and 2 during the Oilers streak. Like, again, I, I feel like we are all on the Edmonton tip. We're all kind of saying, look at those Stanley Cup odds. They're right back in it. They're right back being the glamour choice along with like the Colorado Avalanche. But it's not as if the Vancouver Canucks have pulled an L.A. Kings and they're crumbling down the standings, man. They're almost keeping pace with a team that is unbeatable over the course of a month. That's incredible for the Canucks. I do want to say, though, if I were the Vancouver Canucks and I were showing that 10-2-2 report card to my immigrant parents, they'd be looking at it and being like, hmm, 10-2-2, huh? What yep. happened to the 2-2 two and two here? What's what's this? You see your friend Edmonton? They went perfect. What happened to you? Connor That's and exactly Leon are going to be my... doctors. What are you going to be? Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what my immigrant parents would say uh, if I were the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> um, well... That that brings back the question back to the ordained name of the Greg Wyshynski Stanley Cup pick Edmonton Oilers. Uh, are we back on that wagon? Is that confirmed? Are we just should we just punch that ticket right now? Wish I was never off the wagon for the simple fact that the numbers I gave you before that 2.4 expected goals against before the streak 2.48 during the streak. Those are pretty solid. They've always been solid. They've just been things that kind of went awry that uh, made them fall off a cliff early in the season. It was the lack of production from their star players. It was the goaltending being unable to give them quality saves when they needed them. Um, and then when those reverse course, everything else was kind of already pushing forward. Everything else under the hood was looking good with this team. So, um, you know, they're, they're not going to play like this for the rest of the season. But if they can give you 80% of what this has been, they're going to win the cup. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going to give you an impromptu uh, winner loser here as well. Winner streaks in general. They always work in sports. They always do. Whether they're win streaks, lose streaks. I care about the Pistons more because they were losing like 30, 40 games in a row. People care more about the Edmonton Oilers now because they're on this remarkable win streak. Like the longer it goes, the more interest it will generate. And that's only good for the city of Edmonton, the Oilers, and quite frankly, the superstar of our league. So awesome. And loser is uh, anyone who counted out the Edmonton Oilers because you shouldn't have. <laughs> you shouldn't have. You counted out Connor McDavid. What are you thinking? Don't count out Connor McDavid. So as everybody knows, it is All-Star Week. The festivities actually get started on Thursday with the All-Star Draft on Friday, the skills competition and the All-Star Game itself on Saturday, all on the ESPN family of networks. But Wish, let's focus on Thursday, the draft. It's yeah. back. And we thought, why don't we get into the festive spirit and do our own ESPN The Drop NHL All-Star Mock Draft. But there's only two of us and there are four teams. So what are we going to do about the other two teams, Wish? So we have a simple solution for this, ladies and gentlemen, which is that Arda will pick one team. He will represent, of course, Austin Matthews and Morgan <laughs> Riley and Justin Bieber by proxy. I will, of course, take on the role of an honorary Hughes brother along with Jack and Quinn. And then we're going to have two teams drafted through particularly odd means. First off, Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr. What do you think about when you think of the Colorado Avalanche and their success? You think about a very, very smart front office that is analytic driven. So we're going to draft a team based solely on the athletics net rating numbers generated by Dom from the athletic. It is the data driven team that is captained by Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr. The other team, we got one more team, and obviously that's the Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl team. And when you think about the Edmonton Oilers, you think about what, Arda? You think about starting off terribly and firing their coach, and you think about them going on huge, gigantic winning streaks to get them back into relevancy <laughs> and trying to win the Stanley Cup and be the favorite to win it. They're team chaos. So for that team, we are using a an AI randomizer to filter the names through and we're going to go one by one down their list. That will be team chaos. And at the end of the day, we'll find out who the best GM is. Is it me? Is it you? Is it fancy stats or is it chaos?
Team uh, Team Fancy Stats brought to you by Dom of the Athletic. Team Chaos brought to you by Pete Blackburn and DJ Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out that's, to those guys. That's right. Dudes. Our um, our friends in uh, in multi platform <laughs> podcasting. Yeah, DJ yeah. and Pete. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. So let's go through this. Do I get the first overall pick? Arda, we're going alphabetical, and A becomes yeah. it goes before G, it comes before D, and it becomes it comes before C. So obviously, sir, you pick first. Uh, now, are we doing goalies first? Are we doing yeah, players? Yeah, let's take are the goalies off the okay. board first. Let's, do let's the take goalies. them off the board Let first. And I should say, for the data team on this one, since Dom does not cover goaltending necessarily in his player ratings, uh, we're going to go with the top goalies in goals saved above expected per 60 via money puck. So again, above board, all of it data driven. Let's go with the first selection team. Arda chooses Connor Hellebuck. You know, I had a feeling you might go there. Uh, so team uh, wish will then go with Thatcher Ademko as mm -hmm. my pick. Solid choice. Uh, that means that team data uh, well, actually, I guess Team Chaos alphabetically would go next. So Team Chaos shall select uh, Igor Shachurkin. That's the next name on, on Team Chaos's board. Maximum Chaos. Okay. Maximum Chaos there. And then Team Data will uh, snag Jeremy Swayman uh, as the next name on the goals saved above, above expected list. Good good, good numbers there. Yes. Uh, solid duo. So our solid... Uh selections by all of us they're all great goaltenders all right moving on uh we are now onto the players no no no. Oh, we got to oh, get another goalie bud oh wait we got to pick another goalie okay yeah uh wait so hellebuck swayman demko and shesterkin are gone uh-huh uh-huh look at me i'd make a terrible general manager I'd just skip <laughs> goaltenders all together you're, you're, you're i'm like, already <laughs> you're the guy who gets yelled at by batman at the draft for taking too long come on you're on the clock uh wait, wait, we're wait. all waiting for you Arda. you know what I know that he hasn't had the greatest year, but I'm going to go Jake Ottinger. Give me Jake. He's going to be great in the All-Star game. I truly do not have any problem with that pick. I think Jake Ottinger is probably the best goalie on the board still. I uh, will take Ufa Bufa. I'll take Bob off, off, the, off the board. I'll take Sergei Bobrovsky, which means that Cam Talbot is the randomizer choice. And, <laughs> and Alexander Gagoriev is the data choice. So there you go. There are your goaltenders. For all of our teams, I think uh, I think you did pretty well for yourself there, Arda. I think I have a terrific tandem. Uh, congratulations to me for and, winning the All Star team. Game. And do I have to point out mm. both American? Do I have to point uh, it out? Please. <laughs> Does anyone want to trade, Dom? <laughs> go, would you baby. like to make a trade, uh, Team Randomizer? Uh, <laughs> this is like uh, playing like NHL twenty four, where you're putting in trades, where you like trying to give the least to get the most to see if it'll work. Trade denied. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, with my first selection as a player, uh, it's hard to go. Oh, man. Yeah, you know what? It's hard to go against Nikita Kucherov. He's going to he probably win the Art Ross. Let's go Kucherov. All right, so Kuch off the board there uh, for you. I will take David Pasternak off the board. I When I think of All-Star games, when I think of Flash and Dash, I think of a man who wore mirrored sunglasses to a game in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> I think of David Pasternak. Uh, random, uh, randomizer team chaos. <laughs> See, this is why we call it team chaos, ladies uh -huh. and gentlemen, because the top pick for team chaos, and I'm sorry, Connor and Leon, I know you want to play with, you know, Sid or Pedersen or someone it's Travis Konechny. He is the top pick for team chaos. So he is yes! off the board. Let's I'm go. Sorry to say Arda. And then, <laughs> uh, for team data, uh, Sam Reinhardt to the surprise of no one very high in Dom's ranking. So Sam Reinhardt joins uh team data with mckinnon and mccarr my next selection is Sidney crosby i'm going sid uh sid. Breaks, thank breaks you my heart yep give me sid I, thank you i really wanted sid on my team i need i need i need that that level of leadership uh with him off the board <laughs> <laughs> with him off the board and cooch off the board uh give me uh you know who I'm going to take? Who I think is going to be fun? Uh, give me Marner. He's going to be performing for the home crowd. Uh, give me Mitch Marner on on my team. The Hughes boys and Marner. I see no reason why it can't be great. Okay. Uh, team Chaos. Again, we mentioned Chaos a few times in describing this team. Connor, Leon, great news. You'll be well protected. Tom Wilson 
joins Team <laughs> Chaos via the randomizer. This randomizer is really trolling us today. This randomizer is incredible. <laughs> Go home, Wilson. randomizer. You're drunk. Uh, data, Team Data. Elias Pedersen is the next one in Dom's ranking, so he joins Team Data. I, I need some... Uh, I'm going to up the personality quotient. I'm going to go completely off the board with my next pick. Give me Brady Kachuk. That's my See, next I like pick. that. I yep. like that. You need you need a little bit, a little bit of a personality there. Yep. Um holding up the uh, banner for the Kachuk family. Um okay, let listen. I already took I already took Marner. I I feel like when you watch these All-Star games, usually it's somebody to cater to the home crowd that ends up being MVP or whatever. Give me Slick Willie. Give me Willie okay. Styles. Give me Willie okay. Nylander. He's off the board. He joins. Can I say, you're, you're going to be the home team. I am. I mean, the <laughs> Hughes boys Nylander. are lovable. The Hughes boys are lovable, and I've got two Leafs, and I don't have Bieber, the most decisive Toronto-adjacent person involved in the All-Star game. Uh, team Randomizer takes Brock Besser, probably their best pick so far, and then Team Data takes Krill Kaprizov. Krill the Thrill, Dollar Dollar Krill, y'all, is a member of Team Data with McKinnon and McCarr. You know what would be funny? Yes. If we had more time to do this, I would persuade you to trade Marner and Nylander to me so that I could just complete the Leafs Voltron for the All-Star game. I guess, I, again, this is why you are a terrible general manager because the person <laughs> I'd ask for is Matthews. So you could never complete the Triforce uh, with my chips that I can play in this trade. This is terrible. You're right. You're right. And you know what? Fine. Let them be separate. It'll be yeah. more fun that way. All yeah. right, let's see. You know what? Uh, I can see Philip Forsberg pulling off something magnificent at the All-Star game. In fact, I would encourage it. All I'm right. the guy that's going into the locker room and being like, Philip, as many Michigans as you want, buddy. Uh, so <laughs> Philip, Philip Forsberg is my selection. I like it. I like it. To that end, you know, when you think about a guy who really loves playing in an all-star game because maybe he doesn't always get to flaunt the offensive fireworks where he plays. Although maybe he will now under Patrick. Wow, who knows? Uh, Matt Barzell will be my choice. Mm -hmm. Take Maddie off the board. Good choice. I'll take him on my team. I'm sure him and the Hughes boys know each other well from uh, lamenting about all the attention the Rangers get. Next one on Team Chaos, JT Miller joins our, oh, our wow. boys, Connor and, McDa uh, Connor and Leon. Of course, yeah, not a bad choice right there. With Miller off the board, Miller was going to be the next choice for Team Data. Now they're going to have to settle for Sebastian Ajo, the Finnish Flash, one of our favorite little players in this league. Uh, Ajo joins McKinnon and Makar. I'm going to go with uh, the hot hand right now. Give me Frankie Vetrano. Whoa! Why not? Give me Frankie. He's going to be a personality guy, and also he's had a hot start. So he's going to keep it going in the All-Star game. I like it. The Internet's Hockey Boyfriend. Frank Vetrano joins Team Arda. Yep. Uh, okay, listen, if you're taking uh, Vetrano, then I'm going to take this guy off the board. Give me uh, Nick Suzuki, another guy oh. who really loves playing in the All-Star game. Look, when you've been wallowing in the muck and mire of irrelevance in Montreal, which, again, is very odd to say, but we've been there for, like, a while, uh, you look forward to the All-Star game. I remember watching the joy in Nick Suzuki's eye as he played, like, Frisbee hockey golf or whatever the hell that thing was uh he'll love to play in the all-star game that's for sure okay. uh suzuki off the board the next choice for team chaos robert thomas uh one of my favorite players robert thomas was also going to be the next pick for team data which means that they will go to Vinny trocek Vinny trocek the big replacement for the rangers joins mckinnon and mccarr I'm going to select Rasmus Dahlin as my next pick. I'm going to instruct him to be as defensive minded as possible. First and only time that's ever happened at the all-star game. <laughs> Finish your checks, dump and chase. I want some good, clean trap hockey out there. I'm I'm really shocked actually that there even is a defenseman in this all-star game outside of Quinn and, and, and Kale. Um, all right. Another guy that I think really loves the All Star experience. It's Flash and Dash. You don't got to worry about nobody coming down and pulverizing you because you're five foot six. Uh, Alex DeBrinket will join my team. The cat meow joins his American buddies, the Quinn, <laughs> the, the Quinn and Jack, on my team. Okay. And... Uh, randomizer Clayton Keller is the next pick for the randomizer. The next highest pick for Team Chaos. Let's get cracking, baby. Oliver Bjorkstrand joins McKinnon and McCarr 
on team data. Dom cracking his knuckles saying a very good choice, my friend. Indeed. Uh, I will then with my final pick select Kyle Connor. That's a, that's a solid last pick, by the way. I, I, dude, you could do a lot worse <laughs> than the guy excellent who scores pick. like every third shift. Yeah. I mean, not bad at all. Worse. You can not bad at all. Indeed. Um, all right. So from the ones that are left here, I guess I will take, um, is Keller off the board? Yeah. Okay. Keller's off the board. Uh, all right. I will take the, oh, Elias Lindholm. I, 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 yes, I see. The guy I'm going to take Arda is a, a ray of sunshine, a human rainbow, somebody who brings joy to whatever team he's on, be it, well, I guess the San Jose Sharks are an all-star team. It's Thomas Hurdle, one of my favorite single players in the world, which means the final pick for Team Randomizer is Elias Lindholm. And the final pick for Team Data, even though he's a minus two in net rating, is Boone Jenner. So those are your all-star teams, folks. To recap, Team Arda, Austin Matthews, Morgan Riley, Connor Hellebuck, Jake Ottinger, Nikita Kucherov, Sidney Crosby, Brady Kachuk, Philip Forsberg, Frank Vetrano, Rasmus Dahlin, Kyle Connor, Team Greg, the Hughes boys, Thatcher Demko, Sergei Bobrovsky, David Pasternak, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, Matthew Barzell, Nick Suzuki, Alex DeBrinkett, and Tomasz Hurdle. Team Chaos, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Igor Gore, Shachurkin, Cam Talbot, Travis Konecti, Tom Wilson, Brock Besser, JT Miller, Robert Thomas, Clayton Keller, and Elias Lindholm. And finally, Team Data. Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Jeremy Swayman, Alexander Georgiev, Sam Reinhardt, Elias Pettersson, Krill Kaprizov, Sebastian Ajo, Vincent Trocek, Oliver Bjorkstrand, and of course, Boone Jenner. I'm feeling pretty good about my team. I don't feel really good about them scoring on your team necessarily, because I think you've got the two best goalies, maybe perhaps on the board outside of Demko. Um, but I mean, listen, I think we're all, we all have a certain John Scott-esque curiosity about team chaos i think at this point i love my team uh, nikita kucherov is going to lead the way Sidney crosby is going to just dish him apples all night brady kachuk is going to be the vibes guy philip forsberg is going to give me a couple of sports center top 10 highlights frankie vetrano is going to be in the mix rasmus darlene is going to play stay-at-home defense and kyle connor is going to pot some as well i, I think i'm going to win this whole thing honestly well i think that's probably true unless of course I've got a little bit more Maple Leaf magic than you do with Mitch and Willie <laughs> on my team, baby. <laughs> Why wouldn't you let me trade? Ah, All right, that does it for us here on this edition of The Drop. Normally, our show is on every Tuesday and Friday. But because this is a special week in the NHL, it is All-Star Week. We will actually have a special live show at the conclusion of the NHL All-Star Game on Saturday. That will be on all ESPN platforms. Wish, what are your All-Star plans? My All-Star plans are to really dive into this new format. I, I'm so happy that the draft is back. I always enjoyed the previous draft format. And I'm really excited to see if having more player input into the skills competition leads to a more competitive skills competition and one that's more engaging. But overall, man, like it's the all-star game. It's always a blast. And it's in a place that's really going to appreciate everything that's happening on the ice. And you're going to be there as well on site. in Yeah, Toronto. so I'm on site. Art is going to be back, man, in the the uh, the headquarters. And, uh, and hopefully after the all-star game, one, I'll have a bunch of stuff to tell you from interviews uh during the course of the game maybe we can pull a guest who's to say and uh, we'll have a lot of fun it'll be a great little post game show for everybody absolutely so that will be on saturday so we will not have a friday show for this week but we look forward to seeing you live on saturday after the nhl all-star game thanks everybody we'll see you then.